Anything Goes podcast, man. It's your boy, Sean Peoples. Hey, people. Listen, man. If you like the vibes, you like our movement, like, subscribe, share. Comment in the comment section. Ring the notification bell so you can keep up with everything that we got going on. Also, jump in the community tab and vote. Vote in everything that you see going on up there. It's just a better way for us to gauge what type of content to give to you. So help us help you by giving y'all better content. I'm here with Forbes Next 1000. Black Girl Magic, the CEO and founder, Ms. Carla Bond. Oh, hey. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm glad that you could make it on the show today. You know how to make a girl feel good. That's for sure. <laughs> and you know, I got to give you your props, man. When I, you know, this, this, well, I like to talk to CEO. I like to see uh, our people moving in the direction that, you know, that that's positive and that's encouraging for us. You know, it just gives me hope that, you know, one day they will be calling me a, a CEO also. Hopefully. You got this. Come on. We got you got this. <laughs> so yeah, man. So starting off, uh, this bond. Um, where are you from? I'm originally from Louisiana. I could tell in your accent because I have uh, some of my closest oh. friends are from um Louisiana. So I could tell by how you talk. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't think my accent was even that yeah. bad. Uh-oh. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's me because I know them for so long and I, oh, and okay. I can pick up on it. But they have been some of my childhood friends since I've moved from Jamaica to here. Me and them have been, you know, basically family since since that since I've been here. So, you know, that's like my second, country. second king. Yeah, we just so, country. Uh, that's how <laughs> when you came to, when you when you left Louisiana and uh, what did you do next after that? So I went to the Navy right out of high school. Mm. So um, my first duty station was in Virginia, <laughs> of all yeah. places. That was a culture shock for me. Yes. Good is, Lord. Yeah. Well, vet- I'm a veteran also. So, uh, you know, thank you for your service. You know, Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, what did you do in the military? Well, I started off as an MA or <laughs> as a police officer, if you will. And then I cross-rated and became a corpsman or a medic, if you will. Medic. Mm-hmm. It's for those of y'all who don't know what the... Yeah. <laughs> watch a movie, all they hear is medics. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> the Navy just needed to be extra. That's all. So what happened with um with the MA thing? You didn't like it or it just ran its course or you didn't see a, a, a potential to, to do what you want to do when you got out? What, what was it? So when I came in, I just wanted to initially just get out of Louisiana. I knew if I didn't get out of there that I felt like I was going to be stuck there. So I went into the recruiting office and <laughs> asked when was what job was going to get me out of there the fastest based on my ASVAB score. And he gave me a whole bunch of jobs. And then he said, well, MA is readily available. <laughs> you can leave in two weeks. I was like, I'll take it. I, I, I'll say that I would take it before he even told me what it was. And then <laughs> he told me, it's like, well, it's essentially a police officer slash security. I was like, oh, okay, I, I don't have no problem with guns or using them. So <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Did you enjoy being an MA or was it kind of a, a shock or a downer when you got there and started doing it? It wasn't what you expected it to be. It wasn't what I expected it to be. And, and I, to be honest, I don't think I even went in with a whole lot of expectation. Mm-hmm. But once, you know how it is when you go through your A school and they hyping it up and this is what you're going to be doing. And then you get to your first duty station and you're like, none of that, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not the wait. <laughs> you want me to do what now? <laughs> and I found myself saying that a lot. And I mean, I was 18 at the time. By the time I got out done with MA school, I was 19. I didn't know what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be, who, nothing. Uh, so all I knew is this is not something that I, that I want to do. Mm. And I stuck with it until I was able to cross rate. And once I got on the other side of the house is what we call it <laughs> the other side of the house then that's kind of where i kind of stayed because there was really nothing else that i wanted to do once i got over there and i realized what it was so what made you choose corman uh, out of all of the jobs in the in in the, in the navy and they've got a lot of jobs what made you choose corman 
or medic for those of you. <laughs> I saw a path out because mm. I didn't go in with the intentions on retiring. So I knew that this job equated to something else. And if I just must be honest, I knew that if I went with the Marines, that I could possibly avoid a ship. And <laughs> and I just took on that task. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really to avoid, initially to avoid the ship, because I, I had seen the aftermath of shipboard life and that I just wasn't about that life. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it, it's just, once I got on the other side, especially the green side, it, it was no turning back from that point for me, because that's when I actually started to enjoy my job. Oh, so you enjoy, you you fully enjoy the the corpsman aspect of the military. The green side of being a corpsman. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until I went FMF, I it's it's the bureaucracy of the military that I couldn't. I mean, yeah. It, it's just I couldn't. It, it was a it was an adjustment. I, I, <laughs> I say it I like that. And completely, we spoke about this a little off air yesterday. It's mm -hmm. it's. Uh, for those of you who've been in, you will understand. If you haven't been in, then you just, it, it, it's, you know, it's something that's it's for another topic. It's just. <laughs> yeah, it's a topic for another day. <laughs> another, another whole, probably three months worth of, of, of talking about this. <laughs> so when you got out the military, what were you, what was you thinking to do? Were you thinking to continue um, in the, in the medical field or that was something that you didn't think that you wanted to pursue, but you fall back to it. What, 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 what brought you to it? So it was a little bit of both. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to stay in the medical field in that way, the mm -hmm. way that Corbin generally um, transition, you're an MA, you're an LPN. I knew 100% that I didn't want to be a nurse and I would have had to go back to school all over again, which I did, um, to be a paramedic, all that kind of stuff like that. So I was trying to find the quickest path to get me where I wanted to be. And by that time I was an instructor at that point. Mm -hmm. So trying to fill out where I wanted to take that career. Mm -hmm. Do I want to stay admin instructor side or do I want to go back on the ground and hit the streets? So when I got out, it was kind of the best of both worlds for me because I continued to be an instructor and I got on an ambulance <laughs> out in town too. So with all of that, now taking us to you being the CEO and founder, <laughs> now how did we how did we get here? What what inspired you to get to to this destination? So I like I said, I've been an instructor while I was in, and it was just the way that the world was transitioning because, you know, we we were in cell phones, smartphones wasn't a thing, yeah. you know, <laughs> and the way people were learning, I hated death by PowerPoint. Everybody that I knew hated death by PowerPoint, but that was the only way that people were learning because that's the way we were presenting the information. So I tried to take my classes and, and make them as fun as possible. I want to make you have fun, but I want to scare the crap out of you because the information that I was teaching I needed you to be ready to, to act in those moments. So, and behind the scenes, <laughs> I was an undercover gamer. So I play video games a lot. <laughs> I'm a retro gamer. But you and can't enjoy that. I don't share my games. Uh, they have, <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. They have theirs. I have mine. No. <laughs> I'm that mom. Like, go to your room. <laughs> No, um, but it, cutting my kids loose with a 30 year old console is not happening. Mm. <laughs> so um, I was sitting watching YouTube actually and in my VR headset and it was when VR was Google Cardboard <laughs> and the cell phone and these kids came into DC and they were, you know, experienced in DC and they were somewhere else. And my thought process was if I'm having this experience and I'm an adult and these kids are having such a visceral reaction from 
going into VR, experiencing DC without having to come here, mm-hmm. why can't I take what the information, my, the C, at the time it was just CPR, um, into VR and literally have that experience because unless you do, unless you're an EMT, paramedic, firefighter, that on that type of, or even a police officer, that's not, those type of situations aren't something that you experience on a regular basis and you learn from experiences. So that's kind of where the idea came from. So it took about 18 months to teach myself VR development. <laughs> I would never call myself a developer, but I can troubleshoot some stuff and that's about it. <laughs> and that's kind of where it, where, where it came from. Um, ultimately trying to fulfill that need to get away from death by PowerPoint and mm-hmm. making sure that the students that were coming through the trainings that I was doing, I wanted to make sure that if I saw them six months down the line, that they could remember the experience okay. that they had to be able to help somebody. Definitely. And, you know, I, I think that's, uh, that's, that's brilliant, you know, and that's, that, that's where that black girl magic thing relies because technology right. moving, moving on ahead. Why wouldn't we use it to advance uh, education and everything else, you know? And right. The idea of you using the VR and, the, and just technology itself to make education more fun, because I realize a lot of people will pay more attention if they're enjoying what's mm-hmm. being taught to them. You know, yep. so I, I have to say that that's, that's amazing. Uh, I, There's learning and laughter. And it's two emotions that we remember the most. Just think about it. Mm-hmm. You remember stuff that scares the daylights out of you and mm-hmm. you remember stuff that makes you extremely happy. Definitely. And VR can can do both of those. I'm going to scare the crap out of you when you put on that VR headset, but you're going to learn because you're going to have fun while you do it. But I'm going to scare you. But that's the point. If somebody is hurt in front of you and they pass out, that's going to be scary. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and get past our, get out our feelings and, and, and be able to help somebody. Yeah. And that was my yeah. goal. So how hard was it to put this together? Was it was it a diff was it very difficult or was it something that you know you conquered re- um, really easy? Oh, it was a struggle. This the way I started um it didn't even honestly it didn't even include virtual reality In, initially I was teaching CPR and other trainings just regular but I just refused to use PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to make the classes as inventive is the word that I want to use (laughs) as possible and it's just it's only one of me and I knew that there was that wasn't scalable I knew it wasn't I could make money that was an awesome side hustle but I wanted to be able to have a, a true business that I can that can run itself and I knew that wasn't the way to do it and with me being a tech junkie I'm like there's got to be a way to do this differently and that's where the VR came in because I don't have to be present in order for this to work. So, and as you know, you, you got to make <laughs> something that's going to make money for you. And it's not, it, it's not necessarily just about the money, but it needs to be accessible. And I, I can hire, I can only hire so many instructors and they can only teach at certain times and it may not work and just prevent all the obstacles that education and with learning for adults, uh, all that brings. So when you put it in front of somebody in a cell phone or on a computer, or even in this case, a VR headset, if they're going to be there already, might as well learn something. Yeah, de- I'm definitely. And uh, everybody wants their time monetized. You know, no, no Absolutely. one wants to do anything for free. You want you want to monetize your time, even if it's even if it's it's not for cash is for something that can make, you know, just make you happy, make you feel yeah. time was time well spent, you know? Right. So. And then with the, with the number of people that die because nobody's there to help them or they don't not, not, and it's not always that people aren't there. It's just, they don't know what to do or they're too scared exactly. to do, to, to do anything. And that the out of hospital cardiac arrest is about 45% fatality mm-hmm. rate. And that's, <laughs> that's a lot and that's before EMS gets there so I can't count the number of times that I've showed up and it's 10 people standing around looking and somebody's laying out and nobody did anything before I got there so if it took us 15 minutes to get there the likelihood of that person coming back is slim yeah I mean to be all honest with you I'm I'm, I'm kind of like that I've been so-called practicing um, CPR since I've been in the military 
And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure if somebody falls in front of me, I won't be able to save their life. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you straight. I'm going to get you in a headset. <laughs> that, you shouldn't have told me. Now I have to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> you have to. But that's but when you think about it, what if what if it's you? Yeah, you, you know, know, and and that that's the biggest the thing. What if it's you? Somebody what if, around you that you know. Right, right, I mean. and with especially with now that we got this whole pandemic going on, and people are here dropping like flies now, and and it, it doesn't make sense that somebody that you're in a house with, you should be one hundred percent sure and have the peace of mind that if somebody in your house needs your help and they're regardless of whether it's your house at work or whatever that you can help them or if it's you you want the confidence that when you're there that if something happened to me i got it or if it's me somebody got me definitely definitely um how long did it take you to 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 put this project together was it a few months a couple of years or how, how long did it take you um we're coming up on year two so the first year was just me ironing out what this is supposed to look like this pivoted 50 million different ways they started off from us providing the training to now us being a software as a service so we provide the software to organizations and they, and they 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 have access to the to the training and they can train their people at their leisure so it it took this last within the past eight months that was the true pivotal point in there because before that it, it was I was bootstrapping everything myself. I um, was I got some cash awards for from Google for startups and WeWork, but that wasn't nearly enough to be able to maintain to to get the where it needs to be and funding for black <laughs> female founders is is and- less than <laughs> yeah it's, it's less than one percent. And from the last thing that I read was less than 1% of black female founders get actual VC funding. And that's what solves a lot of things. So things could have gone a lot faster had I had the funding. But I just was determined that regardless of how much funding that I didn't have, I knew it was something that that the world needed. And I was just like, I'm, I wasn't going to let funding stop me. Yeah, there goes the magic once more. <laughs> we make it happen. You know? Yep. Yeah. I'd say black girl magic or black mamas, we they make it happen. Absolutely. I got kids and I, yeah. I, I need I needed to I needed to be to the point to because I mean it's that's it it's just, it's a sheer determination. And I think that I don't think this is necessarily the system, but the system isn't in our favor. Definitely. At, at, at all <laughs> in that regard. So you have to you have to be determined to push through. And if you for me, I fully understood why I was doing what I was doing. And how important it was. So it just wasn't something I was willing to give up on. So when when you started this process, how supportive were your family? Because I know usually, uh, I don't want to say usually, but I know a lot of the times when we're trying to do something, you have people say, "Ah oh, man, you know, how are you gonna do that? Why don't you just do the traditional nine to five? That's safe. You know, you don't have the 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 full support of of your family sometimes. How supportive was were your family of this? Um, my family didn't understand. I'll say that, um, outside of my husband, my husband was right there cheering me along. <laughs> if yeah. this is, you know, what, this is what you want to do, then how, how are we going to make this happen? I, I don't understand it, but I'm going to be here. Yeah. You just tell me where I need, where I need to be to help you. Cause he didn't, he didn't fully understand what I was trying to create, but he knew that he knows me. I'm a brat. Once I get hook, line, and sinker into something, it's gonna take. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make the decision to stop. And but outside of my household, my four walls family, they just didn't. Un- they didn't understand because I, I was working at. Uh, I was a government employee at that time, and I was making good money <laughs> as a government employee. But from the it, it, that to me, how can I say it? I can be the best and worst employee. Um, and that is kind of what <laughs> led me to like, this is just, some people just have that in them to where they, they need to do it for themselves. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just one of those people. I'll say it like that. I'm the best and the worst. I, I, I need, I'm a definitely a white person and I'm about getting things done, but I need, it needs to make sense. I don't believe in busy work. 
I don't, <laughs> I don't my, micromanage just to be a bureaucracy of certain certain things. If I felt that same thing when it transitioned from me being in the military to me leaving the fire department to going as a government employee, I was right back in the bureaucracy, and I knew that just wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. You know, you just have that. You just know this is not what you what want. I'm supposed to be doing. Um, it's not because I couldn't I, I couldn't let it go. Yeah, I, I think a lot of times people don't understand when you have a vision, you have a uh, something that you really want to do. It's hard for you to just say, uh, man, put that on the back burner and, you know, whatever. I'm just going to keep doing this, especially when it's something that's on your mind, on your heart. And you really want to see, can I accomplish this? It's, and mm -hmm. Especially something like what you're doing, which is needed, you need to be able to help people, you know, making a difference. I think uh, that, that was that was very uh, commendable of you to do that. Um, you know, some people would probably take the the negatives and use it because even um, for myself, I, I do that a lot. I listen to people tell me that, oh man, you should, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this this way. Maybe you shouldn't do that that way. And I'm in my head, I'm taking it as constructive criticism. Right. A lot of times it's just people not understanding how someone else's vision works. Right, because the vision is yours. That's the thing. That that vision is yours, and once you once you have that in there, regardless of whether somebody understands it or not, you know what you are supposed to be doing. And every time you try to venture off from doing something else that makes it easy, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Now, there's nothing wrong with um, employ be somebody being an entrepreneur, meaning they get into an uh, organization and they take that organization way, way as far as they're supposed to go. We, we need people like that. Um, and some people are, are not cut out for that level of entrepreneurship. And that, that was me is <laughs> I, I, once I see something and I knew this, like I said, I knew this is what I was supposed to be, be doing and how vital it is for, for people to know. And it, it, it just had to, it had to get out there and I wasn't afraid of failure. And that's the biggest thing I think that I've come across people that, that ask me for quote unquote mentorship is you got to get past the fear of failure. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know. I, I learned as I, as I went, but I knew that I was going to do it. Yeah. And I don't know who said it and I'm a quotes kind of girl, but every journey begins with the first step. So and you got to take one step at a time and you'll end up where you're going as long as you don't quit walking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes the, the journey is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Sometimes yes. You like to give up when it doesn't, you know, happen as fast, as quick as they think it should. But a lot of times if you stick with the journey, you, usually you get there. Right. Right. And people, I think, look at, so you, you look at the, the jobs and you look at the, the Musk and the Richard Branson's and all of them and you see their, their end. You didn't see the small steps that it took to, to get to where they are, but they had a journey just like everyone else. Exactly. And, and had they stopped, we wouldn't have an iPhone. Had they stopped, we wouldn't have Virgin or Tesla or anything like that, but, so, but they had to start somewhere and they had to keep this sheer... Uh, I call it the Bezos determination. You can't tell him he's not going to own the world, but, <laughs> and, and I'm not mad at him for doing it. That's what he believes in that. And he's working toward it by all means, do what you have to do. Um, I'm not like, canceling my Amazon membership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he always had doubters. They all, uh, all of them yeah. had, doubters, had people that didn't believe in him. I was listening to something uh, the other day with Jeff Bezos was talking about how he was being mocked. By a lot of the guys that were richer than him, a lot of the guys that was running company, a lot mm -hmm. of the guys was telling him that, you know, when Walmart's ready to, to shut you down, you're going to regret that you started this business because Walmart is going to show you how it's really going to be done. Uh, I guess Walmart is still um, putting it together because he's still showing the world how it's, <laughs> how it's exactly. Right yeah. you know? And that they, Be Bezos blockbustered everybody like i'm sorry netflix to everybody uh -huh. like he they nobody thought netflix was going to do what it was going to do and and 
<laughs> and, 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 and a bad look at investment. Right. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things where it had. What if he had to stop? You know, when people told him to, oh, it's, this is never going to work. He started his his journey started off. He with Amazon, according to him, selling books. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Books, <laughs> and now he's the everything store. And it's 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 like that that level of grind. Like one of my my um, I'm not gonna say an idol because I hate using that word, but one of the people that I look up to is Mark Cuban. When yeah. you actually read from where he started um, yeah. to and his sheer determination, that's he's the only reason why I watch Shark Tank. I don't care anybody about anybody else on there. I if if I I it sounds bad, but I almost like I study him. To, mm. to to see how he thinks, see how because he he he's he's he can be brash, <laughs> but he makes sense and he thinks common sense and he's thinking long, very very long term. And then he to me is like one of the kings of, in my opinion, of experiences. He took the Mavericks from a book, a, a simple basketball team to a whole experience for those people. But he had to yeah. see it. No, yeah. I, and you're right. I think that, you know, some people don't understand how, you know, like I said before, how to see a vision, and especially mm-hmm. when it's not theirs. It's, it, think about what, what you thought that you was going to do. And then you telling somebody that can't fathom what a vision is. Right. First time you tell them that, they looking at you like, man, Carla, if you don't get out of here. <laughs> and I got those. Yeah. I got those. Like Carla, do you have to quit your job? Yes, because I I I need this. This requires my attention. You know. Yes, and, and you're you're gonna you're gonna get those. And it's I I don't I don't think it's like a hater thing. I think it's just a lack of understanding. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, yeah. Definitely. I, I think that people just I think people ultimately want want the best for you, and I think mm-hmm. it's just human like to doubt somebody when you when when they have something that seems to to them like to me and you i, I want to start a podcast i want it to be huge and they're like man if you don't shut up with that podcast mess and go back <laughs> to doing what you was doing before so you can make money you know and uh and but they they don't see that so it's mm-hmm. not a i don't think it's a it, it comes from a, a a part of hate i think it's just come from lack of understanding them not having a vision and them just not trusting trusting to see how how things evolve because a lot mm-hmm. of people don't understand that it's, it's a course you have to run sometimes and we don't like to take risks. and without risk sometimes you don't there's no reward there's no reward and it's it's a fear thing people we're just innately going to do what feels comfortable and feels safe and follow the social norm and it's, it's ingrained in us we go to school from kindergarten all the way through high school to to go to college, get a job and work to you whenever and just do things in the, the, that particular way and retire whenever you can, if you ever can. So to deviate from that type of social norm for some people, it, just, it messes with their, their, their safety net and their security level. So when fear kicks in, doubt kicks in and it's just kind of a snowball effect after that, and then, and I, I, I like I said, I, I feel like people don't mean any harm a lot of times. It's just they don't understand. Because think about your YouTuber. A few years ago, being a YouTuber wasn't even a thing. <laughs> but now it's a thing. So when it became a thing, a lot of us had not not a clue what this thing was that was mm-hmm. bringing in so much revenue to so many different races of people. Right. I remember saying to myself when I found out how social media has evolved and changed and, and created so much millionaire, mm-hmm. I remember saying to myself, like, how in the world we are the people that's always into social media miss this boom that we're, we're the last, the last to jump on this, you know, this train to, you know, we're the last, we're in the last seats of the train when mm-hmm. been watching this go around for so long. It just, it's just like we just missed it, you know. It's a consumer thing because just think about it. Like, it. I feel like it's a reason why they don't. A, a, most schools don't teach entrepreneurship. It's mm-hmm. a reason why you know schools don't teach you about business 
and things because they want you to consume. So you get a job so you can go buy things like, and your value is equated to that. So if we're too busy consuming and with YouTube and consuming all this stuff and not taking a hard stop and say, like, wait a minute, how did they, how did they do that? And, or why did they do that? But, but that's just not innate for the average person to just think that way because we're just quick to be entertained. And, and unfortunately for us to, as black people, we're, we start in, in most cases, we start in the, in the back of the train to begin with, no matter what it is. And because we're already starting back there, any step in, in <laughs> to the front of that train car is better than being all the way in the back of the yeah. in the back of it. So we get wrapped up into the crumbs and forget that our ultimate goal is to get to the front. Mm -hmm. and, and I think sometimes too is just the fear of not trusting what's what because you know so much stuff that happened to us here. So we are like, there ain't no way you can make that. Let me see him make. Oh, word, mm -hmm. this is true. You know, so, right? Uh, I am not believing that. There's no way this guy can sit home. Be a millionaire for talking this nonsense on his computer, mm -hmm. and let me see his. Oh, my God, he he is. He you know? is. So yeah. You, you learn this stuff over over a period of time where we didn't learn, you know, and 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 that's a crazy thing. Now with upscale, how did you come up with that name? What what what's the meaning behind it? So, upscale is just by definition is increasing one's skills. Mm -hmm. So. It was, it was just as simple as increasing one skills using VR. Mm -hmm. So I took <laughs> the word upskill and with, put it with virtual reality and came and, and put it together because my original business name was like a whole sentence long. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> as I, I took the time to, in that 18 months while I was learning, not only learning VR development, learning business period learning Branding. mindset and all like that i just engulfed myself in learning and i i picked a particular couple not a particular it was a couple people and then how did they do it like just to tap into their mind and how they think and what what do they do on a what what do millionaires do on a daily basis what what do what separates them outside of uh, their financial status what do these people do that are in this tax bracket do differently than these people down here? Mm -hmm. And then I was able to see like certain habits that I had and mentalities that I had that these people do not, and it changed the game for me. That's understandable. And uh, you know, like I mentioned, you're on Forbes. When you when you figured out you was gonna be on Forbes, how did that how did you feel? Was that what kind of feeling was that? I didn't, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. When I got the email after I was nominated, I thought this was a spam. Like this isn't real. <laughs> and here, right? yeah, I was like Forbes, like <laughs> I'm making moves, but I, I didn't think I was making those kind of moves, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I just took some time and did a little bit of research. I'm like, Oh, this is really legit. And when I apply, uh, apply when I <laughs> when I replied to the questions and I just waited it out and I honestly forgot about it mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got contacted again for another set of questions that I had to answer and time went on got about it again <laughs> and all of a sudden I just got the email and wow. it was saying that I had gotten selected and. It, it just felt surreal because I, I I felt like it was one of the things. Okay, this is in a this is this is big, <laughs> you know. Like not many people, and because I read Forbes, <laughs> not many people can say that they even if it's a small insert in Forbes, <laughs> not many people can say that they have been in a Forbes yeah like article of any kind of of any kind. So it was it was overwhelming. I felt. Finally, that they not say that I'm, I'm not gonna say finally. I felt like this is the direction. Now people are starting to notice, and it, it it's like okay, this is this is another step that I needed in order to make 
take take this to to the level in which that I'm trying that I'm trying to take it. Definitely, definitely. So you know, before we close out, how can uh how can people get to to get in contact with you? Tell them how they can um find out more about your um your business. Tell them how they can find out to maybe do some business with you. Send that out to some of the people. So you can reach me on my website and it's upskillvr.com. That's U P S K I L L V as in Victor R.com. Um, you can reach me on all of my social medias, Carla Bond on all social media. And, um, my LinkedIn is the same. Um, everything is, is my first name and connect with me on by far is the easiest way to get in contact with me. It's through LinkedIn. I, I live on LinkedIn. It's, it's a huge, I love the platform and <laughs> for, for networking. <laughs> so yeah, by far, if you need to get in contact with me, I'm open to help anybody that needs to be that, that, that this, on this journey too, because we all in this together. Yeah, that's why I was just about to ask you about mentorship. Are you open to doing any mentorship for uh, young, young females, young males, just people out there in general? Absolutely. Just reach out to me on LinkedIn, shoot me a message, and we can go from there. I'm, we, we in this together. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, well, Ms. Carl, I have to tell you that I'm proud of you. I like the moves that you're making. It's very inspiring. And I hope that people who are who are going to watch the program, who are watching the program, is going to be encouraged and realize that, you know, there are certain things that you might think that you can accomplish. But as you can see, with a little bit of uh, black girl magic, <laughs> A little bit of brains, you you can get it. You can get it done. And uh, you can you get know. it. I thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was Definitely. fun. You know, when I when I when I saw your story and I heard I heard the um the the details of what was going on, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a, a second thought for me. It's like you know, it was, I, I thought that was incredible. I thought that you know somebody of of my of of my um how would you say my 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 background, my my you know, just just someone from my from shipmate. Area, my shipmate. You know, somebody from from coming from the same place as, as me, just being able to pull off something that that you know in my you know I'm I i do not have the same aspiration as you, but just having in my mind to just to have something, you know, done that's recognizable to the to the world or maybe even just recognizable to our to, to people in our culture. And mm-hmm. I, I gotta I got to give you a a a a a, a, very, a very loud clap for that cuz that's Thank that's, you. That's <laughs> people that people that you know sometimes people don't realize what's going on until they look it up. So I'd advise you to go look up how much of a big deal this Forbes uh next 1000 list is. It's a huge deal. <laughs> so I, I, I appreciate I was, it. I, would, I definitely appreciate it. Like yeah, this know. podcast, this thing is gonna be epic. I told you, I'm I'm a fan. Like, thank you. Thank <laughs> I definitely got it on notification. So this is gonna be big. You're gonna get there. So big claps to you for the podcast. Mm-hmm. Keep them coming. Keep these videos coming. Don't let me down because I'm gonna be watching from a distance, and you know it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know we try to do our our ratchet. And righteous. Uh, Come on, <laughs> I need that in my life. I have to get it both in. <laughs> you know, you know, we uh, yin and our yang. We have to get that part of life in. That's that's yeah. Just tell the truth. truth. Tell it. Tell it. <laughs> Once again, this is the CEO and founder of Upskill VR. She is uh, incredible. Uh, I really appreciate her coming coming to the program and you know just having a good conversation um, <laughs> yeah. with us. AGP family, I want y'all to go out there and support, 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 you know, even if it's just to go on, on social media website and let other people know that this uh, incredible young lady is out here making moves and representing our culture the right way. So, you know, don't I forget about it. That. Appreciate it, y'all. Definitely. Thanks for coming through. This is the Anything Goes podcast. It's me, Sean Peoples. I'm here with Miss Carla Bond, CEO, founder, entrepreneur. She a big dog, man. You know we got a big dog. <laughs> Come on, man. We got it. You know, I'm trying to her. get. I'm trying to be like you. I'm give to her be like a round you. of applause. We gotta give her another round of applause. <laughs> Definitely. No. Yeah.
like, subscribe, share, comment in the comment section, ring the notification bell so you can keep up with everything that we got going on. Jump in the community tab and vote. And don't forget, we support black. We support black. We support black. And Say it again for the people in the back. We support black. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for coming through again, Miss Bond. We're out of here. Yeah, no, thank you.